Hi, this is Ahmed Alugaili, Gorav Gil and Manos Brilakis presenting case 253 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case illustrating use of intravascular ultrasound to resolve the proximal cap ambiguity in an LAD CTO. The patient had presented with exertional engine dyspnea due to an LAD CTO and was referred for PCI of that CTO. This is the dual injection, injecting from the right coronary artery, filling all the LAD through septal collaterals, and this is the undergrade injection. Uh, what we can see is that uh, the proximal cap is at the takeoff of a diagonal branch and the septal, and there is some ambiguity. It's hard to know exactly where the vessel is um, continuing. We do have, again, septal collaterals coming from the PDA on the way to the LAD. The leisure length is about 25-30 millimeters. And then the distal vessel is uh, small and diffusely diseased, likely because of underperfusion due to the long duration of the occlusion. We also see that there is a bifurcation on the distal cap. We do have another diagonal coming off at the distal cap, which is actually fairly common to have a bifurcation on the proximal and the distal cap because the flow is preserved uh, to the extent where there are side branches. So to summarize, what we have here is uh, a... LAD CTO. It's a mid LAD CTO. It is uh, around the takeoff of a diagonal branch, but there is proximal cap ambiguity. Length about 25 millimeters, diffusely diseased distal vessel, septal collaterals. What is the plan? The first uh, approach is to try and degrade wiring with IVUS guidance since we have this uh, diagonal branch next to the proximal cap. The other one is to go retrograde, and we left ADR as the last resort because, especially in LAD, using ADR might result in loss of several branches, both septals as well as the diagonals. And here, especially, we have a bifurcation on the proximal cap with a diagonal, and we also have a bifurcation on the distal cap with another diagonal branch over there. So ADR here is the least preferred approach Undergrade wiring or retrograde are the preferred approach. And this is also reflected in the global CTO crossing algorithm. If there is proximal cap ambiguity, this can be resolved either in the undergrade or the retrograde direction. In the retrograde direction here, we can use the septal collaterals. Whereas in the undergrade direction, we do have a side branch, so we can use either intravascular ultrasound or use the so-called move the cap techniques in which we dissect a proximal to the proximal cap. This is the IVUS pullback. We advanced the IVUS into the diagonal branch, and now we're coming back. And we're seeing here the vessel. This is actually the LAD, and now we're in the LAD proximal to the... Uh, occlusion. This is probably a cardiac vein. So again, coming back uh, slowly, this is the LAD. This is the diagonal. There's no significant calcification in the LAD, which uh, makes it uh, very favorable for undergrade wiring. So this is what we did. One can actually do either live puncture with the IVUS or puncture and then go back and forth and see. In this case, we had an eight friends guide, so we used live guidance. We advanced the IVUS next to the diagonal. We could see the proximal cap, and then we took a Corsair excess along with the Gaia next to guide wire and uh, directed the guide wire under direct visualization from intravascular ultrasound. And this is how it looks. Again, now we're coming back from the diagonal towards the LAD. This is the LAD, and here is the guide wire. We see it's actually going very nicely inside the middle of the occlusion. So this is uh, very encouraging. That means that we are intra-plaque advancement of the guide wire into the LAD CTO. We then advanced uh, the microcatheter and de-escalated to a softer wire, this is a Gladius Mongo, that um, seems to advance along the course of the vessel. This is a contralateral injection, and we can see that uh, we are going along the course of the vessel, but actually the wire went into the diagonal, which was originating at the distal cap. So what to do next? One option would be to pull back the side branch wire and redirect it, but that may lead to loss of the wire position. So instead, what uh, we believe is better is to actually use a dual-lumen microcatheter. So this is a Sasuki and a workhorse guide wire. 
and the workhorse guide wire were moving. One operator is moving the dual lumen, the other is probing with the workhorse wire. And uh, initially the wire goes into some septals, but then we pull back, uh, redirect, uh, change the angulation a little bit, and then it seems to be going along the course of the LED into a more distal die septal. We confirm the position of the wire and the true lumen, these are the septals. And then to avoid getting into the septals, we were able to loop this wire. It's looped and now it advances all the way to the distal LED. We predilated, leaving the guide wire into the side branch for protection. There is good expansion, which we expected based on the lack of calcium and intravascular ultrasound. And then uh, did provisional standing, advancing uh, uh, two stands, uh, mid and proximal LED, and jailing both diagonal branches. Proximal optimization. And this is the final result. Excellent flow to the LED. We can see already that the LED has grown in size compared to before the decanalization. And uh, we have patency of the diagonal branches, both the proximal cap as well as at the distal cap. And actually, that distal diagonal is a fairly large vessel. So, in summary, this is an illustration of how IVUS can help resolve proximal cap ambiguity, especially in cases where there is no significant calcium at the proximal cap. You need a large guide for this, ideally an 8 friends, but 7 friends will suffice, especially for the 8th the IVUS. Sometimes through a launcher, we can still do the 7 friends simultaneously with the eagle eye and the smaller microcatheter. When it comes to puncturing the cap, we typically use a moderate stiffness wire, such as the Gaia Next. A Gaia Next 2 were used in our case. But then, as soon as we get to the proximal cap, we de-escalate to a softer wire and won't go in our case. And finally, when it comes to standing, when there are bifurcations, the provisional strategy is preferred in most bifurcations, especially when there is no significant disease into the side branches. Thank you.